This is a homemade multimeter made with Arduino, an OLED screen, a 16 bits analog to digital converter, an operational amplifier and some push buttons. The case is 3D printed using PLA material. It uses a 3.7V LiPo battery and can be charged using a USB cable since it has a USB LiPo battery charger module. It could measure voltages up to 19V with high precision. It could measure resistance from ohms to kilo ohms and to mega ohms. It could also measure capacitance with a pretty decent precision for values of picofarads but also up to microfarads. It has a current module so it could also measure current values. And finally, it uses the resonance frequency detection of an LC tank and it could also measure inductance. So we have voltage, resistance, capacitance, inductance and current. The high precision is given by this, a 16 bits ADC, so a resolution of around 100 microvolts. The resistance value is measured using a voltage divider and 3 different scales for 4K, 200K and 4 mega ohms. The capacitance is measured using the time constant of a discharging process. So in this video I will show how to make this homemade multimeter and what parts we need to make this. But before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB, which upgraded their factory so now they can offer 5 pieces of common 2 layer PCBs with a production time of only 24 hours and that without any additional fees. So for that, prototyping become faster than before but for the same low price. Upload the Gerber file, select the PCB settings and order high quality PCBs for a few dollars. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is my homemade multimeter. As you can see, we have 5 different inputs since having the same input for all the measurements would be quite difficult to make. It uses an OLED screen to show the values and 3 push buttons to change the mode or the scale. On top we have a hole so we could connect the USB to the Arduino for programming. And on the bottom part we have the charging plug for a 3.7V battery inside. On the screen we can see the mode and the scale and then we can see the measurement value. But on the corner we also have the battery value as well so we could know where to charge it. On the side of the 3D printed case we have a sliding switch so we could turn this on and off and that's it. As for the probes, I've used these very cheap probes and I've soldered some of these bullet connectors that we usually use with LiPo batteries. Before we start making this project, let's give it a test. I turn on my multimeter and it starts in the voltage mode. I connect the probes to the first input. The bottom one is ground and we have a diode inside in case that we connect it backwards. We can measure negative voltage with this meter. So I connect the probes to my power supply and I change the values and as you can see, we have decent values. We could measure up to 19 volts. We have a 16 bit ADC module inside, so we could measure with high precision. Ok, so now I push the middle button and I change the mode to resistance. With the top button I can change the scale from ohms to kilo ohms and mega ohms. I test it with different values of resistors and I also check that with my commercial multimeter and the results are the same. I test it with this 1K resistor, then with a 10K resistor. And finally I connect a 1 mega ohm resistor. So that's it, my multimeter could measure resistance as well. Now I push the button once again and I get into capacitance mode. Now here we have two ranges, for picofarad up to nanofarad and then for higher values up to 1 farad. The bigger is the capacitor, the more time it will take to make the measurement. As you can see, now for a bigger capacitor, it displays discharging and we only get the result when the capacitor voltage gets to 63% and we calculate the capacitance using the time constant formula. This is a 220 microfarad capacitor and we get a quite good result. Now this is a 100 picofarad capacitor and using the smaller scale we can get good results as well. If we are into the higher scale and we change from nanofarad to microfarad, the scale will automatically change. Ok, so now I push the button and I get into the inductance mode. This uses an LC tank and measures the resonant frequency and by that we get the inductance value. For example, this is a 100 microarray inductor. 
before I place it the multimeter displays none. Then I place the inductor and here we have the value. I'm not sure about the maximum range of the inductor's meter. Ok guys, so now the current meter is not working, because the module that I bought is for parallel connection, and I need a current measurement in series as any other multimeter. But anyway, see the schematic and the code below, use the correct module and it will measure current as well, as we have seen in previous tutorials. Ok, so let's build this project. We need some of these bullet connectors that only cost a few cents. We need 10 female connectors and just 2 male connectors for the probes. Then we need some drilled PCBs to solder everything. An Arduino Nano, the OLED display of 128 by 64 pixels with IceCrissy communication, the 16-bit ADC module also with IceCrissy communication so we could increase the resolution of the voltage read, an LM324 operational amplifier, 3 push buttons, a sliding switch, the battery USB charger and the 3.7 volt small LiPo battery. The rest are just a few more resistors and capacitors and some wires for the probes of the multimeter. Please see the full part list below. So let's see how to get from these components to this. Two PCBs, one with the digital part and the other one with the probes connectors. Ok, so first I drill 10 holes in one of these PCBs using a 5mm drill. I will fit those female connectors into these holes and then I will cut the PCB to a smaller size. Now I put those female connectors and I solder them to the PCB, but I also solder the resistors and capacitors as we can see in the schematic and knowing that the first pair is the voltage read, then we have the resistance, the capacitance, inductance and the current. I solder thin wires from this PCB that will go to the second PCB. Now on this PCB I solder the Arduino, the ADC module and the OLED screen. Below the OLED screen I have the operational amplifier that I use to amplify the LC tank signal for the inductor's measurements. Next to the screen we have some push buttons, connected one side to ground and the other side to some digital inputs from the Arduino. The amount of wires here is a mess. Please check the schematic while you are soldering so you won't do any bad connection. Ok, so finally I solder a red and a black wire to 5 volt spin and ground. I solder the charging module to the LiPo battery and the positive output from the module to the sliding switch and the negative output from the module to the ground wire of the Arduino. Then the switch is connected to the 5V red wire from the Arduino. So now when I slide the switch the multimeter will turn on. And that's it, the Arduino can work at 3.7V with no problems. The ADC module has its own voltage reference, so it doesn't matter if the supply voltage is not 5V or any other fixed value, the output will always be precise. I am also measuring the battery voltage, so I could print that on the screen but also to adjust the reference for other calculations. All the analog reads are made with the ADC module so we have a better resolution. Download the code from below and upload it to the Arduino. Read the lines in the code in order to understand more. I always come the code line by line so you could see why we do each part. Now the board is ready and the code works. Ok guys, so now I've designed this simple case made out of two parts and three plastic buttons. It has holes for the OLED screen, three push buttons on the side, the USB connector, the sliding switch on the side of the case and the probes connectors on the bottom. It is printed using PLA material, 20% infill and two perimeters. You have the STL files for these 3D parts below. So I put a plastic button inside of the holes. Now I place the main PCB inside and I make sure it is on the right position and that I could push the buttons. Now I use some hot glue and fix that in place. Then I place the button PCB and I glue that as well with some hot glue. I also put the sliding switch and using a little bit of glue I fix that in place as well. On the back part of the case I glued the USB charger module and the battery and now I could close the case. I make sure that it works and I close it using some 2mm smart screws. And this project is done. I slide the switch and I power on the multimeter. On a sheet of paper I've printed some small labels and I glued those on the case so I would know how to connect the probes for each measurement. And that's it guys. You could now measure voltage, resistance, capacitance and inductance. For current measurement check the full schematic below and also the code. The voltage measurement resolution is very high due to the use of the 16-bit ADC. You also have some separated videos for each of these measurements. 
See those videos below in order to know step by step how to measure resistance, capacitance, current and inductance. Also you'll see the formulas that we use, why we need those components and how to get the real values. Please consider helping my projects on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep these kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.